Hey everyone, it's Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be taking a quick look at one of the strongest one-shot builds in PvP. You can see just how much damage we're doing with the blood side of the rapier. And you don't take the full blood side, and you don't take just the basic ice gauntlet setup. We're going to talk a little bit about what perks you need, what skill tree you need to be going into, and then what gear you need as well to continue to build this one-shot build that literally, like I said, does about 8.5k damage if done correctly. You can see just how fast and how much damage it does on some of these clips. Pairing it with an ice gauntlet with healing and tomb where you can just continue to get health back, have that ice spike for even more really crazy damage ice spike is another one i love to see but you can see how good tondo is as well so tondo causes a little stagger you can see also that you can kind of do it through these pillars as well which is something people are not ready for you also can see that we take repost on this build you can also take flesh we'll talk about that later but you can see there's so much mobility there's so much sustain and there's so much burst damage and burst damage is king in today's pvp because realistically you run one life staff on the other team or your team, and you're just not going to kill anybody without CC or burst. So here we have a little bit of CC, we have a little bit of burst, and that's exactly why this is, like I said, one of the most fun builds and one of the most rewarding builds I've played yet in PvP in New World. New World has a lot of fun builds in general, but this, like I said, takes the cake because of the high skill gap as well. If you guys notice, these are all dodgeable moves. The Tondo, the Flourish and Finish. These are all moves that can be dodged. So you have to play them very, very correctly. There again, you can see the damage of burst that we are able to do. We'll have another little video clip here of how much damage this burst does. We get a Tondo bleed stacks going, a bad repost by me, but we get a third bleed stack and a very nice long ice spike to finish him off. And we heal up, we are able to reset, and this is exactly what happens in the next fight. We have a really good looking fight and just another ice spike to finish him off. All right, so let's take a quick look at the build that we're rocking here. We go to the attribute side of things. We get that 50 dex just so we have a little bit more damage on our rapier as well as that 10% chance to critical hit. It's a very, very nice little attribute to add. And then we also have the 300 intelligence, of course giving us 10% damage on first hit on full health targets. This is going to be typically for the ice spike or just ice gauntlet autos across the map. But realistically, you just need that intelligence so you can consistently do damage with both weapons. Then we go for about 110 con. I had 116 to put in here. 110 is important just so that you can use that 40 or plus 40 con food like I have in my inventory. And this will bump you up to that 150 con giving you uh, a very nice little boost there if we take a look at 150 con it does give you that 10 percent or sorry minus 10 percent to critical damage taken which is very very big it's basically like having many resilience on your armor so if we take that in comparison with our light load that we're going to be going i have a 12.2 realistically the best you can get is about a 12.9 it's going to be a medium chest and light every other piece of gear and I'm just kind of mixing it up here. I actually have a medium head, a light chest, a light glove, a light leg, but then a medium foot. The most important really perks you're going to want to take on your equipment as well or on your uh, on your gear is going to be a couple of different things. So resilient, of course, is always going to be big. You're going to need shirking energy if you're going light on your light legs or just on gear in general. This is going to be huge. Basically, if you you know, avoid a hit by dodging while light equip load, you gain that 29 stamina. It's on a six second cooldown, but it gives you an extra roll every six seconds, basically, which is absolutely massive. You can see resilience, something I really like to go. Uh, but the big thing as well is going to be Deadly Flourish. Deadly Flourish is going to deal 24% more damage versus targets below 50% health. You can grab this on your rapier as well. It just realistically costs you a ton of money at the market to buy a Deadly Flourish rapier on the market that's 590 or above. So take that into consideration. That's why I went with Kane Tondo on my rapier because this one only cost me 2,000 gold on Orfina, so Keen, Vicious, and Keen Tondo, which Keen Tondo is huge, it increases your crit chance by 20% against targets affected by Tondo's bleed. On the weapon, it even obviously increases it up to that 20% versus, I believe it's probably like 10 or 13% on gear. And then same thing here with the boots, like I said, Deadly Flourish, if you put that on your rapier instead, you're going to get a like, I think 39% more damage versus targets below 50% health. So that's probably the better route to go if you do have the money for it. I play so many different builds, so I didn't have the money for it. So that's just why I did exactly what I did here. Another thing to go for on the ice gauntlet is going to definitely be 
the healing tome. So heal for 29% of your base health after and tome ends. This is huge. It's going to allow you to continue to build stats on, uh, or not stats, but uh, stabs, or I guess I should say tondo bleeds on the opponent while you are entombed in healing matter of fact. So you're going to be able to apply, let's say one or two, and then you can go and tome, heal up, apply another one, and then do the very big combo damage that you can do with this build. So huge, huge to have the healing tome. And I believe it's best on the ice gauntlet just to have the max amount of healing. Another great thing to do is unending thaw because unending thaw is going to allow you to do more damage. Let me actually look this one up. I don't have this on a piece of gear right now, which is one of the reasons, um, like I said, I'm going a pretty cheap build, and if you're looking to max this build out, you're definitely going to want Unending Thaw, which basically gives you Ice Storm dealing more damage, and Frost Effects remains on enemies for two seconds after exiting the Ice Storm. And then we have one more. This one's going to be called, not the Mighty Gavel, it's going to be called, let me look up Spike. Let me look up Ice. Maybe that'll help. There it is. Ice Refresh. So Ice Refresh, a killing blow with Ice Spike's Mighty Spike or Spiky Refresh or Spiky Reach will reduce all cooldowns by quite a bit. So we can look at some of the different gauntlets here. This is obviously a very low tier. Let me go to a Gear Score 600 one so you guys can see. Ice Refresh. This is a really good weapon right here actually for only 10k. Uh, actually quite a steal. A killing blow with the Ice Spikes Mighty Spike or Spiky Reach will reduce all cooldowns by 74%, which is insane. I mean, insane. So you're going to have that up pretty much instantly again and all cooldowns. All Ice cooldowns, I should say. So that's huge, huge, huge. You're going to do a lot more damage going that ability or that perk on the weapon. You can also opt in for not going for ice shower. You can see that I've been going ice shower in the videos. Typically, I don't go ice shower. I think, you know, ice storm is going to be the better option. So let's go to, ah, let's collect the small coin real quick. But let's go over to, where's it at? The ice gauntlet. Let's take a look here first. As somebody's playing some, uh, some tunes in the background on New World. But we do have ice spikes we have the ice storm and then obviously in tomes just so we can heal up and stay alive a little bit while we're applying bleed stacks to the the enemies so it's going to be big to take some of these passives it's going to increase your damage it's also going to help you out in staying alive um, but this is the build i'm taking like i said i took ice storm instead of ice shower i think it's better for damage and it also it just applies that unending thaw like i said which does a lot more damage as well if you have the unending thaw perk and i definitely suggest getting that and then we have the rapier. So like I said, guys, I'm not going to go too much. Like every build guide, I don't go too much into the perks. But with the rapier side of things, I may just do that. Because there is some very, very important perks that you need to understand before this build works to your advantage. So Tondo is an obvious one. You want to increase this one or take all of the Tondo perks. You want the flourish and finish, of course, as well. And then the flurry is just not good. So we skipped out on the blood side when it comes to flurry. But you can take... Just like on the Ice Gauntlet, there's two different ways you can go. You can go Ice Shower or Ice Storm. Here, I think you can take Repost or you can take Flush, right? Both of those are great options, either Mobility or the Counter Attack. I like the Counter just because it is going to rend them if you have the Repost rend, um, which is huge because you get a rend, obviously, you're going to burst them even more when you do your combo with Flurry and Finish. Uh, but you can see some of the perks here. So in guard A is huge. So deal 10% more damage when your target has greater than 50% health. They typically do, right? So I've been killing people, one-shotting people with 60 to 70% health. This is going to be a huge benefit. We also have the deal 5% more damage to targets with a rapier bleed. You're obviously going to want to take that. Deal 10% more damage when your stamina is below 40%. So use your stamina before the target is, uh, or before you go in with your flurry and finish if you want. And then some other great cooldowns and uh, damage as well when you're full health. But overall, that's going to be the build. That's going to be the build that you should be wanting to go. Uh, like I said, light armor is going to be the way for me. I really do like this build. So let me know what you guys' thoughts are in the comments below. And if you haven't already, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on.